There's more to Android 14 than you might think. The latest developer preview 2, which dropped recently, has added a bunch of new features, and as usual, Google's not publicly talking about many of the most interesting ones that we've been able to dig up. So let's get stuck in. I'm Alex Dobie, this is XDA TV. Let's take a look at the secret features in Android 14 Developer Preview 2. As before, many of these have been unearthed by the excellent Michelle Rahman, who's working with XDA to shed some light on Android 14 under the hood. But first, as always, a word of warning that this stuff may change in the run-up to launch, especially with any unannounced features that have been uncovered. We know Google is working on these features, we don't necessarily know that they'll make it into the final release of Android 14. So we're already seeing more of Android 14's updated back gesture in this latest preview. First, there's a new larger back graphic here when you swipe inwards, which takes on your chosen accent color. And Google's also building out the predictive back gesture that we saw in the first Android 14 preview build. It now works within individual apps. So when you're swiping back between panels in, for example, the settings app, you'll be able to see where you're going to land thanks to this new animation. And the same applies to situations where going back will send you to another app. For example, if you'd loaded settings from the quick settings shortcut, then going back is going to dump you back into the app that you were previously using. To use any of this stuff, you'll still need to manually enable the predictive back gesture under developer options. But in any case, the level of progress being made here makes me think there will be some very significant visual changes coming to the back gesture in Android 14 Final. The second Android 14 preview also includes a new way to be alerted to notifications, which might be useful to anyone with vision difficulties. This flash to notify feature can be found under accessibility settings and comes with a couple of options. First, you can have the screen pulse in a particular color when notifications arrive, or if the phone is facing down, you can also use the camera flash to act as a big oversized LED notification. This is obviously designed to be something to suit Pixel owners with specific accessibility needs, as opposed to being a mainstream way to track your notifications, but it's pretty neat to see all the same. There are some signs Google is about to allow more customizations of the Pixel's lock screen clock. Until now, we just had the big two-line clock in the Google Sans font on the lock screen, but in Android 14 Preview 2, there's a placeholder menu item for clock settings. Much like Samsung, Oppo, and of course the iPhone, this new setting might let you give your lock screen a more personal flair. Until the menu is actually opened up though, we won't really know what kind of customization will be offered. Also in the wallpaper and styles menu, there are a handful of new monochromatic color palettes that combine a single accent color with a black hue. Hard to really know where Google's going with this, but we should see further clues in future Android 14 builds. And also in this menu, there's a new full screen preview UI for changing your lock screen and home screen wallpaper. Android 14 looks like it'll come with a new emoji wallpaper feature. It's hidden in the current preview build, but has been uncovered by Michelle Rahman. Effectively, this is a way to combine a handful of emojis in a particular pattern, along with a particular color palette, to create your own custom wallpaper. Like all the best customization features, it's easy to approach, but has plenty of depth to it. This definitely looks like being a pixel-specific feature, as opposed to being part of Android 14 more generally, so don't necessarily be too surprised if it doesn't appear on other Android phones, but it's still a really cool way to create an almost limitless variety of wallpapers based on your favorite emoji. If you use a numerical pin on your Pixel phone, you might have been frustrated to have to hit enter every time you're done entering your number. Other phones have gotten around this annoyance by automatically unlocking when you hit the final digit of your pin, and now it seems like Google's Pixel UI is following in that lead. A hidden flag in Android 14 Developer Preview 2 lets you turn on the ability to unlock after a correct pin without pressing enter, but only for pins of six digits or more. There's no guarantee this will make it to the final version of Android 14, of course, but if it does, it'll be an added bit of extra convenience. Apple's continuity camera feature for iPhones and Macs is one of the biggest ecosystem features it's added over the past year. And in preview two of Android 14, there are signs Google may be rating a similar feature for future Android phones. Michelle was able to uncover a hidden webcam option in the USB menu of the latest Android 14 build. That presumably should let you pass footage from your phone's rear camera through to your PC Mac. This feature was already alluded to in open source Android code commits, and it's not functional at present, but with the UI starting to be built, there's a decent chance it could be coming to future versions of Android 14. Currently hidden behind a developer flag is this new option to only show new notifications on the lock screen. After unlocking, existing notifications would be removed from the lock screen. This option would make notifications in stock Android work a bit more like iOS or some Chinese phones. 
I kind of prefer notifications the way they are on Android right now, but for iOS switches, this could make things a little bit easier. The regional preferences menu that was previously hidden behind a developer flag in Android 14 Preview 1 is now available for all to see in Preview 2. As expected, it lets you set preferences for things like temperature units, the starting day of the week, and even numerical systems in apps that support it. Not a huge change, but it is an added convenience for app developers so they don't need to build this stuff out for themselves. Finally, one feature Google was talking about earlier in Android 14's development is actually live in Preview 2. The changes to media permissions to clamp down on apps unnecessarily having access to all your photos, audio, and video. Best practice here, of course, is just to use Android's built-in media picker that was added in Android 13 and backported to older versions through Google Play services. But for apps that don't in Android 14, Google is going even further bring in this new dialog box that lets you give apps limited access to just the photos that they need. For example, if you're uploading a photo to Twitter, then this makes sure the Twitter app doesn't get permission to see all your photos. Instead, it just gets access to the one you're actually going to upload. So that's what we're seeing so far in Android 14 Preview 2. Huge thanks to Michelle Rahman as always for digging up some of these features for us, and you can find much more on all this stuff over on the XDA portal. Next up for Android 14 is the first beta build coming in April, then we'll likely learn more at the Google I.O. conference the following month. So some major milestones to come and still plenty of new features to break cover over the next few months. Stick with us here at XDA and subscribe so you don't miss more Android 14 coverage. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.